Hello and welcome to another edition of the Eternal Journey and that resolves and today we're going to be taking a look at Praxis tokens. But before we do, uh, I did actually make a video this weekend sort of explain everything about the uh, the influence star but I didn't really like the way it came out so I think I'm going to try and make like a more succinct version of this and I'll just slide it like at the, the front of a video at some point in the near future just so that people know what's going on. Uh, but basically I feel like that data is also just going to be out of date, so maybe just re-recording it's probably going to be the best idea because I think that there's going to be some real changes with that just because the way the community has sort of reacted to some of the behaviours, like where if a streamer has a three-hour campaign, if you started that stream 10 minutes into the campaign, you might only get one drop, which is a little bit sad uh, considering some of the things we said were that we were going to try and uh, reduce sort of aggressive behaviors where people would be sort of doing something a little bit sketchy where they'd be just watching basically touch streams for like 12 hours a day don't really want that so i've got a suspicious feeling that those things are going to change and be more consumer friendly whilst also still being good for Delft digital as like a, a marketing tool because basically that's what drops out it's just it whatever it is you know it boils down to it's marketing because it's going to keep people playing for longer um, I'm actually kind of using it to complete my collection, but I've already, you know, sunk an amount into the game just to be able to keep current and be able to play basically any of the deck that I want. But speaking of that, let's play Practice Tokens today. Here's the uh, the old classic. Just turn computer on, just being out today, watched uh, the new Lego movie, so uh, that was kind of good. Uh, but yeah, turn computer on to get all the, the radium updates. Uh, my room, not sure if you actually hear that here, but yeah, just more flavor text for you all. So maybe Praxis Tokens fight again. Uh, so I'm Milligan playing this on stream. I've actually barely played. Usually I like to be Masters in like the first three days, but I start feeling a bit burnt out because... It's a second uh, warning for radio, cool. Um, feel a little bit burned out because I sort of feel like we could do with like a, a, a quicker cadence in terms of the releases that we get. But I did watch Mulligan on stream just like slam it with this deck and it does seem pretty cool. So basically standard uh, Praxis Tokens but with Fire Merchant, which is... So like the rally version of the deck, whereas like if you're playing the Time Merchant, now it's a zero four. It's a little bit less exciting, but you would have generally had like a pro uh, a Xenoblis, kind of like a Praxis of all the Praxis in the market, but just get much more aggressive like Fire One. Uh, maybe we could have like some sort of Praxis card in here, like a um, a Purifier maybe. But for now, this seems fine. Like Flame Stock is pretty cool. Uh, but what I'm excited about is the synergy between Teach of Humility and Damar and Stinger, because. Teacher Miller puts Discipline and Weights on your opponent, and Amara Stinger puts five Destiny cards in your opponent's top, like, is that top 20? Yeah. So there's a, a nice little synergy there. It's not always going to come off, but, you know, uh, that's still sort of like just good deck building. So this is a slightly more assertive version of Tokens as well. Uh, there's a lot of the nonsense cards that Tokens used to play, like uh, Pumbug Swarm, so it's not being removed now, as well as uh, the Praxis Displacer. Uh, but we're just playing like a bunch of charge threats and sort of like multiple bodies like Grand Drone. So let's go onto the ladder and see what this can actually do. Uh, this actually seems kind of fine. Um, we've got a lot of ramp, so if we draw into. I mean, probably going to assemble line on two, actually. Yeah, we'll keep this. If we draw like an obelisk, though, this sounds like absolutely absurd. And if I put torches or our, our initiate, which is usually correct, uh, we'll just get to play Trailmaker instead. Just make sure our influence is pretty much perfect for us to game. Okay, cool. Playing as some sort of like a Xenon deck here. I think maybe we could just play Crest and Temple Scribe, but. So let's use as much of our influence as possible. Much of our power. It's a crack up for four next turn, because unlikely it to be there. Maybe there's like a torching star for our initiate, but it's not doubtful. Also, if we just like draw her elbows, this is a lot of damage. There we go. So, you know, smart, thin, lucky, all that sort of stuff. Just a uh, good old fashioned practice tokens. Just like wallop you for eight on turn three. Uh, so, actually, I've been thinking as well, because the influence star gives you the campaign. Maybe something that I'd be sort of interested in is maybe doing a campaign myself uh, just stream like once every time I've got 90k influence to be able to buy a diamond uh, just be able to drop first in the moment right right, cool. 
Let's go, teacher. Keep that. Little crest. Uh, Riley's good because Riley will kill our opponent. I mean, what we've got in play is going to kill our opponent anyway, but just make sure we definitely do. So our opponent could play Vara here, and I think we kill them anyway. Uh, let's just make it less. <laughs> And uh, guess we can only go up to six power of the trailmaker, so I'll just boop it in. And Riley should be able to seal it here. Yeah. Boop. Million you. Yes, we're thinking about that something that I'd like to do where maybe because like streaming just doesn't fit with my lifestyle whatsoever. But I've got two things I want. So I want a eternal card game t-shirt or hoodie just so i can wear it on the street on the well on the channel really because i think that'd be sort of like good for the brand rather than occasionally wearing like a channel fireball t-shirt it's probably better if i just had like an eternal one i have spoken to scarlet a couple times sort of been like are you okay with me printing my own and um, i think that's sort of been like maybe uh so i could just print my own but i would prefer just to have the official one so it sort of suits both things i had to give a bit back to the community by having this diamond campaign like once every 90 days or whenever, whenever it is that I actually earn the influence to buy it. Uh, but also, I get to eventually become a bronze or silver, I can't remember. Whatever level streamer it is, you have to be to be able to get that t-shirt. So, well, uh, Praxis Tokens does Praxis Tokens stuff. Uh, this will probably be a really short video, so me spending hours waffling on is fine. You know, everyone falls asleep and just ignores videos anyway, so... I also got an interesting comment last week where someone was just like, ah, oh, you cut, because, I don't know, it's a weird one. Uh, this hand, it's actually kind of keepable because you get to, like, scribe into a assembly line and we're pretty much guaranteed playing a heart of the ball here. I think we can do better, but I do like it because it's just, like, multiple bodies. We're playing against an aggressive deck, it's cool. Got an interesting comment. Uh oh, playing against a, a chill deck. So, go. I was playing the time deck uh, last week. Oh, it's going to find the way or whatever. And I'd played against someone else, like, after the fact. After I'd already recorded it, uploaded it. And they were kind of cross that I'd not also included that game. Where they won handily because they were playing that kind of aggro. Just seemed sort of weird. Because <laughs> I don't actually just, like, uh, you know, plan play teacher. I don't actually just uh, record every video ever. Uh, Temple Maker. Don't really need that. What I generally do is I'll decide if I'm going to play five or three games. Ooh, okay. So our opponent might be holding up a marshal here. So I'm going to attack before I do anything. Yes, this is Desert Marshal. Silence this. Kill this. That seems like... Yeah, that seems like the best way to go around it. I still get to avoid you for free, though, so that seems good by me. Ooh, this is kind of difficult. Uh, we could go and get Flamestoker. I do like that, but... I think that I'm just gonna like assembly line, just make a bunch of one ones. Then, if we are still alive, we could potentially set up like a rally for like lethal. But yeah, I don't like savagely edit. Oh, hailstorm. Let's uh, just temple scrap, right I guess. Here. I don't like savagely edit the videos. Usually, I it's right here. sort of. Okay, cool. So I've got like the guaranteed heart next turn. I generally just sit down and play for the amount of games. No, this video is actually feeling a lot more like a, a stream, but I'm talking to like the, the collective audience rather than anything else. Would like to see an obelisk actually. Okay, well we could set up the rally here actually, but I think I'm just going to crack our opponent for two and then just play a big boy, make our opponent like cash rule, and then we can set up like. Some damage for later. Also, if we draw any more power, we literally don't need it without an obelisk, so. Oh, there we go. Two cost obelisk plus rally is a lot of damage, actually. Actual's yeah, fine. Ooh. Well, we've got like double merchant, which is nice. Um. I could play like a surprise obelisk, but I sort of would like our opponent to do something like uh, Disjunction this, just because I can then go and get like a Stoker. 
Okay, we'll get to get our opponent for some damage if we want to. I think we might just go and get a blurry. It'll get the job done. I get a blurry. Uh, we could try and crack our opponent for like eight points if we wanted to. Brings them down to nine. That's kind of low. Uh, but I think I'm just gonna. Flamestalker. I'm sort of fine actually, I'm just getting for four. Probably should have been the way around, maybe I'll probably play around like a torch, but even if you're playing on a torch, it's not be fine. Because you still block there, don't you? Yeah. I don't think we'll lose anything, but I would like to have like. Flamestalker just seems good against a deck that's going to try and wipe the board. Ash was fine. Oh, we've gone for the attack, fells the opponent there. Okay, so now we do need to be concerned with Passage of Aeons, actually. Because uh, Passage... Oh, okay. <laughs> That's what our opponent's doing. But I suppose you're going to see one of those games now where our opponent gets to potentially destroy us. They've got Nikto, which is I'm sort of fine with. Uh, next turn, probably just going to like obliterate this just to get in, make sure we're actually getting for the full damage of Flamestalker. Well, this doesn't really matter, does it? If they block, it's like, fine. Okay, so if this is a Passage of Aeons, I'm going to scoop it up and move on to the next game. Yep. Because I don't feel like coming back from there. But it happens. <laughs> I guess that proves our uh, our comment from last week wrong that I don't edit these games out. Literally just play them. Though I'm actually kind of glad with how quick games are. If this is like one more power, it'd be so sweet. I do have to redraw that though. <sighs> I do like how quick the games with uh, Praxis tokens are though. It makes it a lot easier just to record because I'll be 12 minutes in we're on the third game. I'm very likely to be able to. Yeah, get rid of that. Don't need more power. Very likely to be able to just get another one or two videos in. Oh, yes. There we go. I always feel kind of bad when I draw a heart off the top of the vault with a Temple Scribe, but it's mostly irrelevant. It's just like. I just hate this value. But we're playing against Praxis, so this is actually really annoying for them to deal with. Because we get to put the traps in their deck. So I've probably got a torch. Some good information. Tedious, like, I probably not going to use torch there, but it has to give them the uh, the heads up. So we could actually be playing like the Tolkien's Mirror. Oh, yes. <laughs> got him. Uh, this is kind of good because it, preve it prevents our opponent from being able to mine Sting Rose, I guess. Okay, so if they're playing really merchant, maybe they're playing like a bigger version. I'm just gonna crack in for crack in with the team. Okay, no blocks off the opponent. So they must want this power. Hmm. Sort of interesting. I I'm gonna crest though, I think. I do lose a body though that way. No, I can crest next turn. I think more bodies. Because the one extra body is like an additional torch because of the rally. So do we set up lethal? Five points got one blocker. Let's say we've got uh, four, five. The block with two, I guess. Three, four, five, six plus like a million. Uh, let's crash and see what we get. Because we can still do it from this turn. Waystone, nah. Let's see how our opponent blocks, and then we'll decide if we rally or not. So 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, 18. Cool. Our opponent does have a torch, so they are gonna. Oh, they don't have a torch. Huh. They must have traded torch away because it's bad. It's sort of interesting. I wonder what that pause was then. Oh. I'm gonna have to go and reroll my uh, second quest now because I've got a silver one. So, generally, um, you want to complete your gold chest on the day that you get them uh, because then you get like an additional chance of a gold chest the next day. Because if you've already got the gold chest, then you only get the reroll on that chest. It's all very strange, but we just can't try and maximize value. Okay, so this hand seems kind of stained. Um, we'd have to like draw really well 
So, five each. It's basically like a six behind, isn't it? Uh, this is kind of good. But also kind of difficult because, like, do we pledge Skalis? I think we don't. I don't actually like a lot of the pledge cards, though. Um, even the sort of bad ones are like two factions. So like, I like Chunk in Skycore Gecko. Just because you get to have like more sigils on like turn one. Uh, to be able to play that you're only rolling or your Snowcrest Jetty. So actually this is kind of rough, isn't it? Hmm. So if we keep Praxis Banner. Yeah, we're just able to curve out kind of nicely, aren't we? Because they're able to go like assembly line into Sakalis. And then when we get time later on, we can like Trailmaker for time. Because uh, then we'll have free and free for if we draw like a heart. Actually, a sort of interesting deck that I saw as well recently was playing Grenadines in like a. Uh, I don't even know what comment I was called. Winchest or Ambition. I literally just don't know. Deck where they were playing it with um, Rolls Memorial. Uh, that's because like just the empower. So like here we've got five power and play. You just like played the power and you've got like ten. Just that's really aggressive. As well as it's got to make this, like the beatdown matchup so much easier because you've just got all these random like one ones. Uh, I would really like actually to draw it. So I probably can't rule us next turn. They can play a Vara, which is sort of a nuisance. So I'm actually not playing Skalis. I mean, obviously I'm not because I didn't play it before combat. So now, do we set up the Obliterate for a Vara? I think we do. So this is sort of like less efficient because I really would want to use everything. Like slamming the assembly line plus the, the one. So we don't have to worry about Vara now. So I think we'll just get to kill our opponent probably. Especially if we draw like a Rally, they're just dead. But most of the things that they could put to stabilize would be a yikes from me. I am gonna save Sakalis though. If I put plus a four power now. Yeah. Don't wanna get blown out by like a, a harsh will here. Just keep the Oh, they're just dead anyway. Cool. Boop. I mean, to be honest, I don't actually know if they're dead. The thing with Rally is you just play it and your opponent dies. You don't actually have to have to do maps. <laughs> Praxis tokens doing Praxis token stuff. And somehow I'm serving Zedon with this deck. It's like, boop. Okay, so here we are for the last one. I run the play uh, against a uh, well known name here. I have no, no idea how I pronounce it. Uh, Gaonan? I don't know. So this sounds kind of slow, but also kind of awesome because it's got an obelisk, so we'll keep it. There, if we draw like another initiate, we can also just play it on two because we go initiate plus uh, banner. Also, it's like Grandin Jones, probably fine there. Let's give our point a good evening. I'm actually looking at what decks to play next because uh, I've, I've sort of been out of the loop a little bit. I don't really know what's good at the minute. Uh, I guess Sea of Impulse is kind of fine because we get to play it next turn with the um, initiate. We also do want more power because of Obelisk, and also if we do actually flood. Then we get to play like next to the merchant anyway, so it's kind of fine really. Time so quickly. let's play like this. If um if our girl survives here, I'd post play an obelisk just to set up our assembly line being better. Never stop. Hmm. Never break. <laughs> okay, well. I am fearless, mate. <laughs> Come before you. I put on blocks, I'm like super happy because we're just like no removal that deck. So I'm sort of okay with this. Actually, one thing I'm worried about now is that I didn't sound test before I am. Um... Yeah, before I uh, turned, before I started recording, I didn't actually sound test like I usually test, so this could sound awful. Uh, so look what's good in this deck, or against this deck. If I want us to crack us for forts, don't want to crack us for a million, it's fine. Uh, the damage that we're planning on doing is just going to be like a bajillion because we've got Rally. Yep, no six me. <laughs> so we can scribe. We could play obelisk and try and like wall pop on it. 
Because hmm. we've only we've got access to five power though. Okay, well that makes it even easier. So let's play Granite Waystone because it gives us the Grand in. Don't really need the Grand in. Um, I think we might actually just set up Cloudabash. So Cloud's kind of good because then if our opponent does sort of like try and wall us, we get to do that. Uh, but also Rally's is kind of good, isn't it? Yeah. I think I do like Rally's that kills our opponent, but with an Oblix in play, it's probably less important. You'll get Cloud of Ash. Uh, it's just like a tap of like three of these. I probably want to do anything by it, it's kind of fine. I probably should attack with like the top row of five Grandins. Leaving like two one ones and a three two to sort this out. Actually, don't mind trading uh, Merchant with any of these either. Then, if we do get to get like any tricks out of them in combat, then next turn we get to shoot something down with um, Heart. So, I, I'm going to block. So, this forces my opponent to use a trick on that one. But, I may as well do it on this to save most damage because if they play a trick on. They can play. Basically, they can play a trick on this one to make this one bigger because of the empower. So, I may as well force them to do it here. Yeah, so, they get to gain like a bajillion of your life, but. Yeah, it's mostly fine. It's more sort of tedious than anything else. I probably gain 15. Geoma. Well, Geoma's messed up, so we have to kill that. Let's play this, may as well. Uh, if we draw a power, we get to like Obelisk plus Cloud, which is huge. Let's uh, tap free again. Knock our opponent down to the princely 39. Yeah, Blade from Sart, fine. Cracks is for 6. 10. Well, let's put like a 1 1 there. No escape. No escape. So I've got a bunch of free freeze now. Well, these girls here ain't blocking, so. We'll attack with them for sure. Attack for 12, that seems good. Got millions of bodies back to sort of protect ourselves. The empowerment of these is sort of tedious, isn't it? Vajoma, yikes. Fortunately, it's not got endurance all the time, so I promise at 37, uh, we can currently do like 9, 19, plus this. This is super tedious, it's going to be able to gain so many lives. Uh, I think we're going to attack for 12. Yeah, try and set up some sort of amount of lethal next turn. I don't want to keep the power, because uh, then maybe we could get Rally. Cloud Rush isn't super good right now. Probably been better as Rally, because maybe this could have been a turn where we could have killed our opponent. Because uh, we've had like a bunch of five power units. Never break. <laughs> so, of Merchant, maybe this is getting like a. I mean, if this goes and gets like Omen of Austerity, probably in quite a lot of trouble actually. Because uh, it kills our. Oh, well, Savage is fine. It does a bit overwhelm. And uh, it gives this. Um, plus two, plus two. So units go down in size. So we do need to make some rough trades here. Don't pull out there. The savagery was really good there. Um, I think we're probably just dead to what our opponent's got. Well, attack on. I think this is a game we're just not going to win because Geoma is a 2 turn clock as it is if our opponent has any spell. It gets to kill us. What? I guess this is just like the Praxis Tokens life. Well. Well. 
I swear I just give up on it, the old business. <sighs> yeah, Rally would have been better. I'm not sure if Rally would have won us the game, but it definitely would have been better. Maybe to the point where we could have uh, just done a lot more damage. Yeah. Oh well, onto the uh, deck tech, I guess. Okay, so here we have it. Um, I actually think there might be some sort of shell, like maybe not now, but maybe in the future, where Praxis could have like an aggressive deck because I do actually kind of like uh, Teacher of Humility and Amaris Stinger together. Uh, just they got a nice little synergy, which I do like. And then I just, well, I just like Sicalis. It's just hard to place them in a deck. Uh, I guess they're kind of good in the Elysian Mall deck that I keep saying I'm going to get around to, but just never do. It's just, it just never feels good to play the deck, so I just. I don't want to record it, but I guess it is is a potent one, but we'll, we'll get around to it eventually. But right now, this is just like practice tokens, really. <laughs> it's not much to say about it. Um, it's probably one of the easiest decks to make on a budget, because uh, you really don't need like Teacher Humility, you don't need Heart of the Vault, you don't need well, you don't don't need a uh, Scalis, because we managed to get away with not using that for the longest amount of time. Uh, I think pretty much like the, the only staples of the deck that are like rares is like Zion Obelisk and potentially the merchant, but you can get by with just like loads of random sort of like token makers and other sort of like two forms like Ambracolite. I just managed to grab your opponent out and then just overwhelm them with just huge units. But it's not, there's not too much to analyze when it comes to Praxis tokens. It's just like, it's, it's a fine deck that will, if your opponent's trying to do something slow and they just don't really attach me too much, you just have to kill them. And you can actually, there are builds of this like in the past where you could beat like FJS unitless who are just playing basically just like Hailstorm and like eight other like harsh rules. And you're just able to still kill them just because Xenobolus just turns everything into a threat. Because like a powered up, well, ultimate Xenobolus, like you just put six Barrett Glaive Grand Injure. That's just that busted. But yeah, that's it from me. Thanks for watching. See you around.